Welcome back to another episode of Dirt to Dust. I am your host, Caleb Forbes. I've got Mr. Ryan McCutcheon here, uh, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. Um, you guys really liked the uh, the post, or I'm sorry, the uh, episode we did with Ryan a couple weeks ago. And um, so, Doug is out in uh, gallivanting in Moab this week. So, I'm and, back in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, we have, uh, we have tagged Ryan back in. Uh, I think we've got a really cool episode for you guys today. Um, we're just kind of gonna kind of talk. We're gonna wing it. We're gonna go off script a little bit. Uh, okay. I think this is what we do best. Ryan and I are pretty conversational. Uh, so, with that said, let's just jump right into this. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. All right, and we're back, uh, Mr. Ryan here. Uh, for those who don't remember, Ryan owns the Outlaw Off-Road Atlanta location. Uh, him and I have a couple things in common, uh, more than just being uh, paternal brothers. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, someone I, I definitely look up to, respect. Uh, something we have in common, though, is we have had our fair share of uh, many, many vehicles <laughs> over our <laughs> lifetimes. Um, a lot of which being Jeeps some of which being not sometimes having both at the same time. Um, so Ryan, something I want to kind of discuss today, man, um, is when, at, at what point during the modification process of owning a Jeep, does a Jeep no longer really become a daily driver? Man, that's, that's a pretty loaded question. Um, <laughs> when you think about it, cause when you start getting into that, it's kind of goes to the discretion of, you know, what, what the owner's willing to deal with at the time, you know, like wear and tear items. As more you get into this, there's a lot more wear and tear that goes on with these vehicles. And it just kind of depends on what you're willing to deal with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's back it up a little bit first. Um, what would you what would you consider like the ideal daily driver for a Jeep? I mean, ideal daily for me is at least, you know, it, the most 37s, you know, a mm-hmm. moderate lift, you know, control arms, front and rear, trap bars, front and rear, uh, gears, obviously. Something that like you can confidently take on the weekend and drive it home that, that, that Sunday and go to work in it. That, that, that for me, you know, says a lot, you know, me may have a little bit of a, steering wheel that's off a little bit in case you like to party but i mean (laughs) something that's not going to death wobble on the way home or Mm -hmm. or anything like that i got you so where do you draw the line at vehicle wise like about what year range do you think (sighs) it's just not there anymore compared to what we have say jl jt i know i want to say like you know your xj and tjs just because just because they're getting older they're just starting Mm -hmm. to show more wear um, you know, parts are still plentiful for them, but you know, it's, it's just, like I said, things are just, and even though really early three, eight JKs, like, you know, Oh seven to 11, you know, they're, they're all starting to show their age. I see it all the time, you know, and it's just something you got to consider with, you know, an older vehicle. Yeah. And that's sure. just kind of where I draw it. I don't know exactly what generations of Jeep you have owned personally. Um, but for me, I've owned pretty much every generation. Uh, I grew up around CJ's. Uh, I, my first Jeep was a, uh, early nineties YJ total piece of crap. Um, it was actually in the shop more than, uh, more than I drove it to be honest with you. It was just yeah, that was cylinder, yeah. four cylinder, five speed YJ. I mean, it was a turd. Let's just put it. Oh yeah. It was a yeah. Turd. Um, I've owned several YJs since then. I've dailyed YJ since then. I've had uh, TJ. Now I have an LJ. I've had JK. I've had multiple JKs. I've had a JL. So <laughs> I've kind of, <laughs> I've kind of had the exact full spectrum here. And um, I've also owned other vehicles that were far more comfortable. 
Um, yeah. I, I personally think, um, I mean, do we see a lot of TJs and LJs on the road and, and YJs and XJs on the road still? Absolutely. Yeah. Is it something that I personally want to deal with every day? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think, I mean, we can kind of go by generation here. Uh, I'll just go ahead and X out a CJ or a YJ entirely. I'm not going to daily either one of those. Anymore. No. Um, the, there's just, there's absolutely no reason to. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to kill my back. I'm not going no. to fight with a damn thing yeah. just to get it on the road and, and, you know, and still have to like deal with wind noise and everything else going on. I definitely would not take it on a trip. I might take it, to, you know, 30, 45 minutes away, but that's not going to be a yeah. thing. Yeah. TJs are where I get a little. I'm a little on the fence. Uh, yeah, um, and that's kind of, like I said, that's what it just depends on what's all done to it. You know, like if mm-hmm. it's just a little stock boy or something on 33s, but yeah, you yeah, can get away with it. Absolutely. Once you step I mean, in the in the 35 range, you know, tire size, man, you kind of you kind of start getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty stuff and the drivability and bouncing yeah. around and all that right. stuff. I went through that with my TJ Rubicon. Like I loved it I, when I got it. Yeah. And was glad when I got rid of it because that thing <laughs> beat me to death. I daily drove it. I actually had a '83 J10 pickup that I actually daily more than that Rubicon. Wow, that had that truck. Yeah, that mm-hmm. truck was pretty cool. But um, almost like a boat. Like you're happy. That your two happiest days are when you get it and when you get rid of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went through the same thing with my TJ though. Um, I started off on 32s, made no it to 35s. And there's just the way that you have to, well, j- unless you're willing to put a lot of money into a TJ, the way to run 35s is a four plus inch lift, usually yep. sometimes a one inch body lift to clear. Yep. Um, we're talking factory fender flares here. Um, so then you're still on factory axles. A Dana 35 does not like 35 no. inch tall tires. Nope. So like there, there's just so many things here that I could run down the list of them. Like it's, that's exactly. where I draw the line. But I do think you're right, though. A uh, a stock TJ on like 31s, 32s. I'll even go as far as to say, like, I've I've seen a couple, and we've mentioned this before. Um, Rubicon, like JL Rubicon wheels and tires, which is like a 33, yeah, it's like a 285, 70, 17 on like some yeah, nice new wheels. Yeah, yeah, that can be fit under because usually that's a skinnier tire. That's not a, a fat tire. Right. It's usually like 10 and a half, 11 and a half wide. That under a TJ, I think would be my limit. It looks good. That would ride comfortable. Yep. Um, you don't have to lift it sky high to get to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, I, and I will caveat this with saying um, either only with a best top, like a really good best top soft top or like their new twill uh, series uh, for the TJ LJ. Yeah. Um, one of those or a hard top, a hundred percent. Other yeah. than that, you're you're going to be fighting with a lot of stuff. You're going to be fighting with loud noises. You're not going to be able to answer the phone. You have nope. hardly any creature comforts. And I know this is going to get a little bit of flack. You didn't buy a Jeep for creature comforts, no. We no, did. but I mean, but, if you're, when you get down I mean, to daily status, then yeah, yeah. I want creature comforts. You want something comfortable. Like I'm not yeah. I'm not a kid in high school anymore that just right. wants to beat around on a Jeep. Like I, for me the Jeep and the LJ is actually being purpose built for, you know, being off road, being trail use. I mean, it'll go on the road. No problem. Uh, but if I'm taking and something I consider like for me, what the basis of a great daily driver is for me is like, am I going to be comfortable with this on a four plus hour road trip? If I drive to your shop, (laughs) if I drive to your shop and back from Charlotte to Atlanta and back in one day, or I'm going to, um, you know, Pigeon Forge for Jeep Invasion, or if I'm going to Jeep Beach, like, how long can I sit in that vehicle without having to get out and say, a f- this thing, and I will bleep that out, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> a, little, a little sketch moment, excuse the cussing. <laughs> um, yeah, but like, that, that's, that's my thought process, is, I, like, there's no way in a, yeah. even even my LJ now and and this is coming. I drove it to Myrtle Beach a couple times. I drove it to Pigeon Forge. Like I, there's no way I would take that on another road trip like that. It's underpowered. It sucks gas down. It's not the most comfortable. Even with probably arguably the absolute best suspension going under this thing. It's yeah. under coilovers, <laughs> big giant shocks, uh, rock crawler control, actually rock crawler, everything, but yeah. one tons it's stable, but still like 
it doesn't matter if you have 538 gears under the thing, it still feels underpowered. Exactly. I mean, that four oh can only do so much, you know? It can only do so much. Now, bobbing around town, uh, yeah, going from is. trailhead to trailhead or, you know, stuff like that, absolutely. Uh, but if you're taking it on the highway, that's when you're going to see that things begin to really what we call down the, on you. the liability line where it kind of ends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Also, I don't want to be, I don't want to be stuck out in the middle of nowhere uh, exactly. off the side of a highway because four O overheated again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so that's kind of where we get into the JK uh, JL talk. Um, JKs, I th- still think are, are perfectly dailyable early exactly. JKs. Oh, seven to 10 are, they do feel a little outdated, but I mean, the three eight is livable. Yeah, um, especially if it doesn't have any oil leaks. Um, and again, this is—I I would absolutely agree with you. Thirty uh, sevens, probably at most. Uh, um, yeah, at the most. Yeah. And I know, and, and it, people are again. If whoever listens to this, if you disagree, please comment below. <laughs> yeah. Tell me how wrong I am. Uh, <laughs> I, I just—I don't think forties. And as popular as 40s and 42s and 43s are, I don't feel like they are a daily tire. Like, I don't feel like that you don't spend that kind of money for that big of a tire just to go wear them down on the street. Exactly. Yeah. Um, maybe the caveat of like the 38 Nitto being like my absolute max. Um, that's but, still an expensive tire, though. That's something else yeah. you got to consider, too, is like. Man, 40s aren't cheap, even though they're the new 37s. They're not cheap. <laughs> no, no, you're talking. It, um, I think the last time I priced out a Nitto 40, I think it was like 560, yeah. 5, 580, something around there, upper fives per mm-hmm. tire. Like, and unless you're just Mr. Moneybags, like, you know, I don't, I don't know of anyone personally who just actively likes to spend that kind of money yeah. a lot. Uh, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> if you're out there, give me a call. We can let you sponsor the show. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, man, I just, and I take that into a, a big factor as well. Of like, what am I, what am I compromising by daily driving this thing? Um, so with that said, we get into the JL JT line. Um, perfectly dailyable 38s. No problems. That, that eight speed transmission. Dude, is that, God, I love my eight speed. God, I love yeah. that eight speed. So <laughs> let's, let's talk about your JL for a minute. Uh, my, my old JL was, it's a little bit outdated. It's not worth talking about anymore. Yours is relevant. You've got some new parts on it. You've got 40s. Um, would you consider your JL something you would daily drive her if you needed to? Uh, I probably daily it more than I probably should, if I'm being honest. <laughs> but do I consider Because my commute's not that far. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it does get tiring after a while. So I have to like swap to the Cayenne or something else and just be like, take a break from it. So mm-hmm. something, something, and it does ride good, but it's still kind of, you know, it's, it's still a Jeep on forties with custom axles and stuff. I mean, it's doing mm-hmm. things that normal Jeeps wouldn't do. Like I've, I've driven plenty of, you know, stock ish JLs and I'm like, man, I wish mine was like this, but you don't get the performance out of it, obviously. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't consider mine a daily at all. <laughs> See, I, that's kind of where I disagree with you. I think, I mean, minus the 40 inch tall tires, I think if they were on like 38s or something, that is a yeah. pretty dailyable JL. Like it's still, I mean, I get it, it, but it's on a great suspension. You've got really it, nice it is. All of your electronics work most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> I was to say, oh, oh, whoa, hold uh, on there. <laughs> D- Doug did own that Jeep and he was not easy on it. So we'll, we'll caveat, caveat that. With oh that. man. Uh, Doug, yeah. hope you're listening. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like I, I feel like yours is teetering anything bigger it, it, yeah, or, or more lift or, or anything, any, like if you were to put a generate cage in that Jeep, I would cut that out of the list immediately. Yeah. Um, I would oh, say yeah. that's no longer a daily, um, uh, like anything you're adding a custom roll cage to, I would not, would not mm-hmm. be in the daily driver category. Yeah, uh, that's, but, that's, that, that's what I really like about about that Jeep is uh, it's still fairly, you know, stock appearing, you know, other yeah. than what's around it, but all the amenities inside are still there besides the heated seats. Cause it's got PRPs in it. But other Which than I that, mean, I mean, every, everything if we, works. 
Yeah, but I mean, if we wanted to, we could slap a set of uh, seat heaters button. in your your PRPs, yeah. wire them up, and call them a day. Like that's exactly. that's fine. And that's one thing that I really like that how Doug built that Jeep originally. Um, he started with the Sahara, so he got all <laughs> all the options. Um, kind of similar to what Brittany did um, in yeah. her four by E. She just she started with every single option. I think the only option that we don't have on that is Safety Group Two. Don't quote me. Um, it's the the lane keep assist and blind spot oh, monitor. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she's got everything else. She's got LED headlights. She's got LED fog lights. She's got the one touch power top. She's got heated seats, heated steering wheel, <laughs> power yeah. windows, you know. Uh, so everything that we could in leather, obviously, but everything we could put into that, we did. And that Jeep, that JL, holy shit, I'll take it yeah. anywhere. Um, it's fantastic. Downside is that the gas tank is a little bit smaller uh, because of the battery system. But yep. again, I mean, it still gets 24, 25 miles to the gallon. So it's not that bad. Yeah, I'm running um, a crisp 10.2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say in my my old JL, which was a two liter turbo, it was one of the first ones that hit the market. I want to say I was right at um, 20, 21 on 40s. Um, really? Yeah, the, the two liter turbo is actually extremely efficient. It was fun on the highway. Like I took that thing all over the place, uh, and I would not hesitate to do that. Forties again, a little bit too big. Um, if you're going to daily driver, or daily drive your JL or JT, I, I still think forties might be a little bit big. And I know that's controversial, but I said yeah. what I said. Um, <laughs> a, a JL on thirty eights or a JT on thirty eights looks so good. Yeah, it, it, it really is like my teetering line of, of, all right, anything past this is a little bit too much or should be justified with I'm driving to the trails every weekend. Yeah. Do you need to own a trailer for a jail? No. Nope. No. You can you can definitely weekend warrior that thing to whatever trail you want. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Anything I, 40s and over, I just I would be careful. Yeah. I, I tell you what was probably a, a good discussion of, of where – what we're talking about is Doug's gladiator that he had. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was perfect. Like 38, yeah. you know, hemi swap or not, like still like it, mm -hmm. it, it was right there, you know, modified enough where, and it still was comfortable. Oh yeah. I drove that for, <laughs> oh man. I thought, <laughs> yeah, you drove for a little bit, didn't you? Yeah. Doug gave me the keys for a little <laughs> over a month. Um, yeah, because you took it because you brought it to Jeep Invasion in 2022. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Doug had some family emergency stuff, so yeah. just kind of schedule conflicts got in the way. But I ended up driving the, that that Gladiator for right around a month, month and a half. Um, I drove that thing every day to and from work. And my commute every day is about 50 minutes each way. Um, gotcha. I mean, so like, to and from yeah, I think, the, how, how'd you, the shop. Yeah, so how'd you feel when you got out of it? Did you feel beat up? Did you feel tired? Like, I mean, that's... No, uh -uh. Yeah. no, it felt felt good. Uh, I, yeah. I, my, the only thing that was beat up was my wallet because the gas gauge, you, <laughs> you can, you you can physically see... The, <laughs> you can physically see the gas gauge moving down on every single trip and you're like, yeah. oh, there yeah. goes another $80 that I got to fill up this thing with premium. Yep. <sighs> but Rain that's besides the point. <laughs> Raymond's about to learn that because he's putting a four seven stroker in his Cherokee, and I'm like, uh, buddy, hey <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you realize what you're getting into, right? And he's like, yeah, oh no, oh no, and I'm like, but all right. <laughs> the, for for those who don't know, Raymond Ray is the lead tech at Atlanta. He's got a really awesome XJ. Yeah, he uh, does. does he daily that XJ every day? Wow, every single day. Not right now because because the motor's gone in it. <laughs> The remand like, I mean, motor it takes, is like two years old. <laughs> it takes commitment to daily and XJ. I, I will say that it um, does. And I mean, he's he's really built that up. And I've driven it. It's really I've ridden it. It's actually really comfortable because he's got mm -hmm. you know the Iron Man four link up front. I mean, he's done and okay. JK Axles fronter. He's done so much. But yeah, he's he's also kind of teetering on that <laughs> on that line as well. But uh, yeah. it is a really cool Jeep. So yeah, I mean, you can definitely build an XJ. Mm -hmm. to to be that level and to be that comfortable but that can be said with anything on the list so far it, it, um, yeah. we could we could build a yj that is perfectly sure. dayable we could build a tj or lj that is perfectly dayable um even i mean when you talk in talk about getting into built stuff like you can build anything mm -hmm. and make it a daily driver comfortable like we can take you know 
and, and I'll just I'll go all the way back. We'll start with the CJ. Uh, mm-hmm. We could take something like that, put new axles under it, coilovers, 40s, put a different engine in it, and somehow figure out how to make that a daily drivable, yeah. drivable vehicle. But compared to like... So, so like when you start getting the older stuff, though, it's going to take a lot more money to get that far versus yes. like a JL. So that's something you got to right. consider when you want to do something like that, which is fine. I mean, mm-hmm. that's, that's cool, but that's just something you guys got to take into consideration of when you do, let's get down, but you know, to the TJ and, and down is this yeah. how much money are you want to throw at it to, to get that dailyable? Like you're going to have to do it on TJ long arms. Like yeah. you, you want it to ride have good to. long arms. Mm-hmm. Have to, um, like you said, well, CJ have yeah. to get rid of the leaf springs. Like you have to, there's, there's just a level of commitment that you have yep. to, you have to be aware of. Um, yep. whereas with a JL, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I'll be fully transparent on Brittany's JL. I'm running just literally a, uh, Terraflex, uh, leveling spacer kit. It's like yeah. one and a half up front and like three quarters in the back. It, so it leveled it at one and a half inches and it for 30 and 35s. It's, it's perfect. Like but it's perfect. It is perfect. You don't it's have perfect. to have super expensive stuff to do no. that with a JLJK. Um, older stuff. You definitely do though. Yes. Uh, now that said, um, I think we should talk a little bit about what our daily drivers are and possible other vehicles. <laughs> Cause I want to get into this you real quick before we, we get off of here. Um, so go ahead. Let me know first. You got the JL. Uh, what is your, what's your, like, what's your good daily though? Um, uh, honestly, I haven't really touched the Cayenne a whole lot. Um, but I, that's usually what I, my go-to, but ever since I got my M5, uh, that's kind of, that's kind of been where I've been at here recently. Daily uh, unless it's raining. Daily a, a, <laughs> a, uh, under, well, I don't know what the word is here, but a uh, incognito race car is basically what that thing is. I call it the German Buick Grand National, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> the German Buick Grand National. I like that. And it's it, that's actually pretty accurate. Yeah, because, I mean, it was it's it's funny because that car was so unappreciated for so long, just like the Grand National was. And as you saw the years go. And it, now, even on YouTube, you watch just about anybody. They've got a Grand National. Maybe that's all they talk about, how great this car was and this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. And now, when you hear someone talk about the E39 M5, which is what I have, um, that's what people are starting to talk about, how good the car is, like how it was so unappreciated. And it's just, they're both just skyrocketing in value. I mean, yeah. you can't touch a Grand National now for $50,000. I mean, no. that's just insanity to me. Where My dad picked one up around the corner from the house for – $5,500. And that's no joke. He really did that. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it's just kind of cool. Like I actually took it to a, uh, little, little small European car meet at a local brewery a few week, uh, weekends ago. And it was just kind of cool to have something that was appreciated. It just was something a little different. So, it, yeah, you know, that's why, that's why I've been a really, it, yeah, the crew cab Mustang. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's a really fun car. It's got gobs of power, man. Like you, I, everybody's like, you want to supercharge anything? It's nope. Don't need to. It's plenty no, enough car for to. me. It, it's predictable. I don't want to do anything that makes it unpredictable, uh, especially with track control off, but that stays on for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and the Cayenne, the Cayenne's great. It rides good. I don't, I don't want to dis- disregard my Cayenne either. Like I, I do love that thing. It's just having uh, some immobilizer issues where it just mm-hmm. takes a minute to start. Like it, it'll try to start and then you got to take the cycle the key a couple of times. It'll, it'll start, but it's yeah. just been kind of becoming a hassle. So I haven't really been driving it as much. So yeah, which is um, understandable. But again, what <laughs> year is your Cayenne? It's a 09. It's an 09 where, you know, we're, you're, you're teetering on something that's yep. starting to get, I mean, it's, it, it, and that, it's starting to, just, yeah, mm-hmm. it's starting to show its age a little bit, you know, the time and chains probably it's, it's, it's going to need it, you know, sooner than later. Uh, um, right. you know, just regular maintenance stuff. I've not going to say I've let it go. It's just where it was my daily and I didn't have anything else. All of a sudden now I have like, you know, the, the Jeep and, and the M5. Yeah. Um, it was my daily for a while, you know, and I, and I love it and I, it sounds good. It, it rides so good. It's comfortable. Mm-hmm. I can fit all my friends in it, you know, not saying I can in anything else, but like comfortably where they're not having to like jump out of the Jeep or like climb in the Jeep or right. a car where, you know, it's low to the ground or it yeah. doesn't have a whole lot of room in the back seat. Like it does, but you know, it's well, the kind is just perfect for that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and one thing I will say for sure, stuff. especially if you've got aftermarket seats in the back of a jail, the back of a jail is already hard enough for a big yeah. dude like me to get into. Exactly. Um, you try to load friends in and you've got aftermarket seats on top of that. Yeah, that that becomes that becomes yeah. a headache. Um, which I understand completely. Um, uh, my, my daily, I, I went straight up white girl. Um, soccer mom. I've got, I've got, I went straight <laughs> up soccer mom. I've got a 2020 grand Cherokee limited. Um, so how, how do you like that thing so far though? I, I actually love it. So Good. we just took that, uh, Britt and I just took that to Boone for our, our wedding weekend, um, ceremony weekend. And I mean, I was, so I'll, I'll start from the beginning. I'm just outside of Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, had to drive over an hour to outside of Rock Hill, South Carolina, uh, to pick up flowers um, from my sister to floral design. So, anyway, oh, okay. picked up flowers, everything from from her house. Drove an hour back to my house. Had to pick up Brittany's wedding dress. Drive two hours to the mountains to the the Airbnb up and down the mountains all day. Uh, the, the cabin was at the top of a mountain, um, drove around all weekend, came home and I hadn't hit a quarter of a tank of gas yet. Oh, that must be nice. <laughs> I was, I was average, even through the mountains, That's I was awesome. averaging 26 to 28 miles per gallon, which is it, pretty freaking phenomenal. Um, now that has the, the three, six in right? it. That is, yeah, that is a three, six with an eight speed. Um, but it's also full time four wheel drive. Oh, okay. So it's full time four wheel drive. I have a four wheel drive low. I have uh hill control descent. I have all of those things. I have a snow mode, I have a sand mode, I have a rock mode. I have all those things. Um and one one of those mornings it was raining it was just pissing rain. Um and the driveway to that cabin was extremely steep. So I did have to put it in four low just to make sure I wasn't slipping tire yeah. like, you know, trying to gas the crap out of it to get up the, the driveway. But I mean, and that thing did great. And I would not hesitate, honestly. And the only thing that the only reason why I would not keep this thing is a tow rating uh, with yeah. the LJ being what it is. I really need something that can pull 8,000 um, pounds yeah. between uh, Doug and I talked about this on a previous episode of what comfortable tow ratings are. Um, him and I both agreed that about 75 to 80% of your factory tow rating is about as max as I would go. Exactly. I don't want to max that tow rating no. out. I don't want to be anywhere close to max just no. in case I get an accident. Um, but the Grand Cherokee is just not it. Um, even if you have a Grand Cherokee with a max tow uh, from the factory, you have the diesel, you have everything. I think that tops out at 7,600 pounds. Um, or seventy four hundred, something like that. It's right there with the Gladiator. It's not quite enough. Um, that's yeah. the only reason why I would get rid of it. Other than that, if it wasn't for that, and this is something I'm considering doing, actually, um, throw in a, a decent lift kit on it. Throw in some JL wheels, wheels and tires. Some yeah. on wheels and tires. Good. Throw in a roof rack on. Uh, do some little overlandy stuff with yeah. it, and turn it into like a base station for filming and photography and whatever. Which is definitely a possibility, and even doing all that, I would it would still probably get twenty to twenty two miles to the gallon because we're not yeah, talking yeah, about anything big, and it would be comfortable. Yeah, um, I've taken that thing to Florida and back. I've taken it to Hilton Head and back, like everywhere. Um, I like it; super comfortable. Has leather, has heated seats, heated steering wheel, the big eight point four screen. Like it literally has yeah. everything I wanted to, and the sun sunroof. The only thing it doesn't have is a Hemi. But I didn't want to pay for him. Well, I mean, what so. do you really like to me? What, what are you really getting out of the Hemi? Because you need the power. Like that three yeah. six is plenty, man. That three six is plenty. It gets it's it. Plenty. It gets it. Like I've looked down, and and the thing about the the Grand Cherokee is, if you're not careful, like you'll speed in the thing. Yeah, uh, that's in a the, Wrangler with the flat windshield, um, you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing, I'm going so fast. Yeah, <laughs> you look down, you're doing like fifty, <laughs> yeah. uh, and you're holding up everyone in traffic. Uh, the Grand Cherokee, on the other hand, you're like. I could it's, probably go a little faster. And I was like, well, why am I, why am I passing everyone? Everyone's going so slow today. Yeah, you're doing I've, 90 and you're like, oh. <laughs> I find myself doing that a lot in the Cayenne and the M5. I would just be mm -hmm. bobbing along down 575. And I'm like, oh, oh, God, I need to slow down. I'm sitting there doing 90. <laughs> and you just don't even realize it. Like You, you don't no realize food. until you're coming up on a trooper so doing my, 20 you know, my over. My had, had SUVs for years. And then she recently got a new Maxima. And she called me the other day. She was like, this thing's going to get me in trouble. I said, what do you mean? She's like, well, I looked down and I was doing 95 on highway 30. I was like, Oh my God, mom. Yeah. It's just, 
it's a, such a difference that it makes but like because it's I quiet because because you're here also hearing engine noise and wind mm-hmm. noise like you really think like it's your perception of it, it changes completely yeah and you just don't realize off, it. it cuts off almost every visceral thing that you have to yep. connect to the road and and i'm gonna get some more flack because i think that is a hallmark of a great daily driver yeah uh, if not in the sense of like you can tune out and zone out, but the fact that <clears throat> you're not aware of every bump and crack in the road, yes, exactly. your your steering wheel is not ripping out of your hands every time you go over a bridge. Um, you know, you you don't realize how fast you're going. You don't have to stop at every gas station. If you're hot, you told you you turn the AC on. If you're cold, you turn your yep. seat heater on. You know, I guess for and, you, you probably got yeah. cool seats and heated seats, huh? Uh, I've got heated, but not cooled. Um, oh. <laughs> but yeah, for me, right? <laughs> but I mean, I can fit the dogs in it comfortably. Yeah. I mean, dude, we packed this thing. I had all three dogs in the car. I had a whole weekend worth of wedding stuff, which anyone who's married knows that's a lot of stuff uh, in the back of the sink. And it went great. <laughs> like, it had, had zero issue whatsoever. Yeah. And to me, I think that is the hallmark of a great daily driver. I could yeah, probably it, say the same is. thing for a Forerunner or a yep. you know, Tacoma or any of the Lexuses. Jesus. Yeah, uh, New Land Cruiser for now. sure. Um, but almost like, you know, even down to like your Ford uh, Explorers, Expedition, stuff like that. All of those yeah. are great, great, great daily drivers. So it, my whole point of this podcast is that if you're teetering on that line of building your Jeep further and continuing to try to push it every single day on the road versus just biting the bullet and getting a daily driver, get the daily driver. Get the daily driver. Get the daily driver. It, it your body allows, will thank you. Your mind will yes. thank you. Your wallet will thank you. <laughs> well, and your rig will thank you too because you're yeah. not beating the crap out of it. Yeah. So, I mean, I think arguably the the most abuse that our Jeeps will see actually comes from daily driving. And it's not yeah. what we put it through on the trail. Uh, it's it's highway miles. It's revving. It's it's all the maintenance stuff that we probably need to do better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so if you're on that line, if you're on that fence, just get the daily, get the it, daily. It's man. worth it. It's just worth it. <laughs> it it is. is worth it. All right. With that said, I don't want to keep you too long. We are running out of time. This is supposed to be a quick episode. Um, but I, this is something I could probably talk about for a little bit longer. The same. Anyway. Yeah. I, I knew um, as soon as you, you told me about this topic, I was like, He's like, we're going to make it quick. I was like, eh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Having a Doug moment here. It's all right. Yeah, um, that's good. Well, dude, I appreciate you. I appreciate you having yeah, this absolutely. conversation Anytime. with me. I appreciate you chiming in. Um, we'll definitely do this again. And sure. to everyone watching, um, all 10 of you or 100 of you, I don't know, however <laughs> many of this gets. Um, the last one with Ryan did really, really well. Uh, first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you yeah, for thank you tuning in and, and watching this. It means a lot to us. Um, it means a lot to me because being the one who produces the show, puts all the content together. I work really hard. I'm trying to make sure this stuff is is out there. So I appreciate all the listens. Uh, if you like it, give it a big thumbs up. If you don't like it, drop me a comment and tell me why I'm wrong. Uh, definitely don't mind that. You can listen to us on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on YouTube Podcasts, and of course, YouTube as well. Um, I think that is it for today. Ryan, I appreciate you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we're we're going to have Doug back here uh, soon. My Moab is going on, and uh, he is, like I said at the beginning, he's gallivanting around Moab right now doing some fun stuff. Hey, we can do another uh, one if you want. <laughs> we, we might just be able to do another one next week. Um, so if that's the case, you guys look out for Ryan next week. Uh, once again, I'm your host, Caleb Forbes. We will catch you on the next one. See you guys. You've been listening to the Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime, to see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.